everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Ah, today is going to be um, a vulnerable one for me. It's ironic to say that because a lot of people think that my podcasts are already super vulnerable because I just tell it how it is. Um, this one's vulnerable because uh, I'm still processing it, and I hope that by making this podcast, it will help me to understand it for myself more. Um, I'm not sure if I'm even going to release this one. Uh, if I do, it's because I love you all and I hope that you can also learn some stuff from it. I hope it can be beneficial for you as well. Because I feel like we're all just trying to figure it out. <laughs> um, so this is another love story. Not quite ending how I would like it to. Um, but the journey, I guess, is the most important part. Um, something to know about me is that like ever since I was little my I was raised with two sisters and my mom and my dad and um, my sisters are two years older and two years younger and like I don't look anything like my family like my mom is like tall all of my family's tall I'm actually like the shortest one and um, which is funny if you know me in real life because everyone always is thinks that I'm shorter than I, I actually I'm 175 in real life <laughs> um so people always think that I am shorter than I actually am anyways um I don't look like my family I was raised my mom is very beautiful she is like blonde hair blonde straight hair like high cheekbones um we have like Norwegian she comes like from Norwegian jeans and my dad is um, almost two meters and like reddish brown very curly hair um, and yeah my sisters my younger sister looks like my dad and my mom my older sister looks like my mom and I'm like a mix in the middle which equals I feel like a hybrid and for most of my childhood I felt like I was adopted um, but the point is is that I f my dad raised me like my reality growing up was that I was not beautiful this plays into the rest of the story, so that's why I want to explain it. And also, being raised in a society where most of a woman's worth is through the objectification of how she looks. Every little girl is raised, if you're raised in this modern world, to believe that beauty is a very high standard. And unless her parents or some, she has some outside influence to countervent that if she's just going along with society programming which my family did and also my religious programming is just like a woman needs to be beautiful and then she's married and she's a housewife and maybe she has kids and you know like it's either her beauty or her service like how can she help the people around her that's like where her worth comes in not just you know being herself being an amazing person just being able to be loved and accepted for who she is it's like no her beauty and what can she do for us and so I was raised f believing that not only like my dad was only my dad was uh, abusive to us but primarily towards myself and that is very confusing for a child like not only is it so heartbreaking to be abused but then to be picked out of the crowd <laughs> Uh, and made to feel like something is wrong with you and also that yeah that, that, that I like wasn't my dad would was always saying how beautiful my older sister was and like there was just a lot of emphasis on everyone else and I was just kind of like literally I felt like there's a, a phrase in American slang that's called the redheaded stepchild it's just kind of like this girl that no one wants in the family and they just kind of treat her like this extra. And that's how I felt in my family. That's how, that was my reality growing up. But in a sense, it's like I got the worst of, out of my dad. The worst attention that I could get. And then I did a lot of therapy. <laughs> and then I did some ayahuasca. And then I, you know, had some come to Jesus moments, as we say, where I like really realized what was going on. And I realize now that my dad was 
I was actually my dad's favorite out of my sisters. My sisters actually said this a lot growing up, but I never believed them because they were like, dad gives you so much attention. He likes you more than he likes us. And I was like, it's negative attention. I want him to go away. I wish he would just leave me alone. And, but then, you know, this sticks with you, like this programming until you're able to like consciously. And even today, sometimes this comes up where I'm like, I like forget that I'm beautiful. (laughs) Or maybe it's just a great thing because I don't value it. Like, I don't think beauty, I think beauty is something that you come with your energy. It's like something on the inside. But there's this this feeling that I've had of like, is there something, you know, like grew up with this feeling like, is something wrong with me because my family doesn't love me and they're mean to me. And I just want to be happy. I just want everyone to like, to be <laughs> okay and like for my dad to be like a nice loving person that like takes care of us in all ways he was very good at taking care of us financially and like having like physically like from the outside world I felt very safe but physically from my dad I didn't feel safe which is an irony um so all of this is leading to the story that I have to share today um I met someone when I first came to the island. So when I came to the island like four years ago, it was my time of, I want to be fully in my power. And so I came here dating someone where I was in an open relationship with, and we actually came to the island knowing that we were going to break up. But the whole world, it was like, I got here two days before the country closed down when COVID happened. And we thought like the world was literally falling apart. So we thought, let's just stay together until until we can like figure out what's going on and then after that I there's a lot of shit show that happened when we broke up but then like I just decided I want to be in my full power I want to like date people and not have to feel like I need to be in a monogamous relationship because I don't actually want that and I was like exploring openness and honestly exploring having connections with people where I wasn't having to yeah, like give all of myself to them and I could just actually have boundaries. I was learning boundaries with men um, because I was raised with not having boundaries. My dad was not instilling that in us. It was like he wanted us to have boundaries with everyone in the whole world except for him. Uh, And if that's your primary, they say your parents are your first love. So they teach you by watching them love each other and how they love you. That's your attachment style that's like how you have relationships in the future and my dad's attachment style was a narcissist who believed that there was no differentiation between me and him in his mind like I literally was part of his body like his arm or you know his leg and he could just treat me as such so if he was having a bad day he could treat me like that and if he believed something or he thought something then that's how I needed to believe and that's how I needed to think and that's very confusing for a child like when you're a little kid and you're trying to build your own identity and then your parent is reinforcing that you have no identity and you need to just follow whatever they believe and in order and like how they view themselves is how they're going to view you so my dad didn't love himself and so he was trying to project that onto me blah 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 Anyways, so I'm here on the island, I'm vibing, and what I notice is that there is a lot of people here who are single, also in the same, trying to figure themselves out, find themselves, have their own personal identity, and have connections, like the kind of the same boat that I was in when I first got to the island. And then there's people who are (laughs) still playing out the very monogamous relationships, which is fine, everyone is allowed to do whatever they want. What what I noticed was this vibe of feeling threatened by me. <laughs> feeling th- I mean, I'm only speaking from my personal experience, but feeling threatened by a woman who is fully in her power, fully in her sexual power. And I was not trying to take anyone's boyfriend. I actually didn't want a boyfriend. I wanted to be in my own vibe, doing my own thing. And what I know now is that a woman fully in her power, she is fully in her pleasure. And that is one of the most attractive things to everyone, 
to men, women, alien, dogs, all the things. And I kept running into situations where my friends, boyfriends were, were into me. And I was so freaked out by this because I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't flirting with them. I wasn't even, I was just being, and this is something that I, it was triggering this deep wound in me from a child where me just being, now that I understand myself, I was just a very sexual creature, even from a very young age and growing up in a, like a, a cult, a religious cult where women were just here to, you know, get married or serve the, the religion there, there's no space for them to be in their sexual power. That's actually the most threatening thing to the church. And so my dad and my, the religion I was raised in were always trying to make me feel like I was ugly. There was something wrong with me to like push this part of myself down, which is my power, my mean in my pleasure, me and my sexual power. And I felt this was being triggered at this time on the island when suddenly I was getting blamed for the attention that was coming my way by these situations. I'll explain a couple. So we're going to talk about the story is leading to my relationship with someone I will call Jake. Uh, That is not his real name. It's very close to his name, but I just don't want to call his name out right now. Um, so how I like came, I knew Jake as someone who was dating my, be- one of my best friends on the island. And I was very excited to get to know him because I felt like he was part of our soul family and how I ended up coming into a conversation with him was here on the island during lockdown, there was like a ton of people who were making a lot of money on crypto. I myself was one of them. Um, But there's people here who made like millions and millions and millions of dollars on crypto. And they were here in lockdown and doing like having nothing to do. So we were all hanging out. And one of these men, his name's Kyle. I don't care about saying his name. Um, He met his girlfriend on one of those dating apps where it's like rich men and like pretty women. You know, these apparently these dating apps exist, exist. Um, so he did, he met Jessica on one of these dating apps, flew her out. They, whatever, fell in love, whatever, whatever. She's, she was actually like a normal woman who was very smart and I became her friend. Uh, so I was like Jessica's friend. And then Kyle, Jessica went out of town one time and I had started this mastermind called Millionaire Mastermind for people who were millionaires because I wanted to network with people that were on similar vibrations. And Kyle was one of these people. His family is super, super rich, like billionaires. So anyways, Jessica went out of town. I, Kyle asked me what I was doing that weekend. I invited him to a public event at a friend's resort, like a party that was happening. He came, we hung out, smoked some weed, whatever. It was like very chill, like friends hanging out. She freaks, Jessica finds out because she goes through his messages apparently. And I will, I want to say very clearly that there was no vibe between me and this guy. Like I was just as a friend, I knew him outside of her, but she freaked out and said that I was trying to steal her boyfriend. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like I one, I don't find him attractive at all. And I don't care about his money. I have my own money. And I just want to have friends and like, what is like, I was just kind of like saddened by the whole thing. Um, but her, her being her crazy self, she not only freaked out on me, she started spreading rumors and in the community about this. And I was just like, this is ridiculous. This is back when I didn't have as good of boundaries because nowadays this would never happen. Um, and then I was just like, okay, whatever. I guess I'm going to lose this woman as a friend because this is not how friends treat me. And I, d- I didn't do anything. Like that's the thing is if I had done something, I can understand and I would own up to it and apologize. But inviting people to a public party is not doing anything. So after that, I, <laughs> I just got really upset because it was it was not only that it was triggering this other part of me that I was just talking about with from my childhood of like me just being myself as me being my beautiful happy you know fully in my power self was somehow wrong and like activating all the men around me 
And somehow that, that made it so that it was like, somehow that made me the bad person, right? So I went away that weekend to what we call the bays, um, which is, uh, Afro's trying to get in the door, um, which is Wainam and the sanctuary. It's like this beautiful part of the island. It's my favorite part. And they have parties there. And a friend of mine, uh, Mark, he was going to DJ, and he's one of my favorite DJs. He's going to DJ at our SAG dances coming up. And his wife got separated from him during lockdown. She was in another country. And I was going there, like, Mark is one of my close friends. I love him. And him and I and a bunch of friends were sharing one a really beautiful villa over there at the sanctuary. And he has a bunch of friends that he got locked down with on Samui that I didn't know at the time. And so I come and, like, get introduced to all of his friends and, like, I'm so excited to meet all of them because I'm like, oh, new people. I'm so excited. I've, I've been hanging out with the same people like for the last couple months and and I'm just excited to hang out with amazing new people that Mark keeps talking about. All of them were like, where is Mark's wife? Why are you here? And it was just this whole cold vibe of like as if I am trying to come on to Mark and take him away from his wife and basically like I'm this harlot who is like enticing him and I was just like I don't understand what to do with this situation (laughs) like I don't know what's going on and I was just really sad I felt very frozen honestly um and I didn't at the time I didn't necessarily have my tribe yet where I could lean on and like talk to about what was going on and so I just was really sad (laughs) Uh, and then Mark and I talked about it and he was just like, fuck them. Let's just have fun. And like, you know, you know who you are. I know who you are. And let's just like all. So some of my other, my other friends came over here from like to the base from this part of the island, not his friends. So I ended up hanging out with my own friends that weekend. But like, that was like the second thing that happened. And then a couple of days later, after we'd all been dancing for many days and having an amazing time, um, we had like the last day over there together we were all eating brunch together my friend brought like paints and we were like painting and I was singing and and then I hang out with um my one of my best friends and her boyfriend her new boyfriend Jake and Jake and I started talking and like we're both from the same part of like we're both from California and we're we grew up in the same area and like he his childhood is very similar to my childhood and we just we're both Scorpios like there's like so many similar similarities between us of like how we move in the world and who we are and and it was just fun because it felt like I was talking to someone who understood me and it felt like home like I felt like wow this person really gets it and I was so excited to have this person as part of my soul family and then I was like singing and doing art and stuff. And then there was just this moment where I could see that he fully saw me for the first time. Like, and I was, and he was just like, wow, I would really love it if you came over and I'll make you dinner. And all I want you to do is like sing for me. And I was like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Like I just had this panic where I was like, is this person falling for me? Like I don't. I love my friend so much, his girlfriend. I could, and I just kind of like shut down and like stopped talking <laughs> because I, me just being my normal happy self, I was so worried about hurting the people around me. And this is something that I think is like should be talked about more is like women who are fully in their power. There's so much like, shame and guilt that is put on us about the attention that we get from that because you know like there's even um there's even a term for it it's called victim shaming so like when someone is like raped or attacked or harassed they're like well what were you wearing and like what were you doing and how were you acting and I'm not saying that this person was harassing me or anything I'm just saying this this there's this mentality in the world still where like a woman who is just being her beautiful, divine, flowy, feminine, like in her pleasure, in her power self is blamed for men 
and their reaction to that. And I don't agree with that. I think that everyone should be responsible for their own reaction to everything. Like if I'm just shining my light and being this beautiful, happy self, not flirting with someone, not no, do not have any intention to take anyone's boyfriend or do anything, but just being myself, like being my happy self in the world, I'm not responsible for how someone else reacts to that. Like I'm not responsible for someone falling in love with me because of that. But for a long time, I thought I was. And for a long time, I would just kind of shut down my light. Um, and I would literally just not let myself be happy around people because when I was when I was my gentle, happy, amazing self, they would fall for me and then there would be problems. And then suddenly someone would be upset at me. And I was like, no, no, no. So first I had to like shut down, cut out the people in my life that were making those assumptions. And then choose who I who had the privilege to see me all the way who had the who was who did I feel could hold that and be able to respond to it in a way that was nourishing for me because there's still this there's still this like energy in the world of like men that are like oh I want to just fuck you and like um just like women are objects and I can just fuck them if they're beautiful and it's their fault for, you know, shining and being beautiful. And I'm like, no, I don't agree with any of that. I would, I choose to let go of all of that and step into a vibration where women are safe. <laughs> they, we can shine our light and be fully in our power and we are honored for that and we are seen for that and there's space held for that and we are safe from rape or shame or guilt being put on us for being beautiful and divine feminine. So fast forward, um, my friend and Jake dated for a couple years and I was always so happy for them. And then when they broke up, um, it was really devastating for me actually because I viewed them as kind of like my big brother and sister um, on the island because they're older than me and I love them and I would always like go over to their house and they'd be making food and it was just kind of like a home base for me to like drop through and it was like a really dramatic breakup and I actually like helped mediate some of it and it was just like lots of stuff um, and then fast forward like another year and this is before Faraday and I got together. Uh, I connected with Jake and like he, yeah, there's just this feeling that I have of like wanting him to be more than what he actually is. Like there's always this vibration around us where we are so similar and that, and like people that know us think that we've already slept together, think that we are, like we are very intimate with each other, but we have never slept together. Like we've slept in the same bed so many times and and like been on like trips together and like hosted many events together and done lots of things in the community together and yeah like nothing's happened and I got to this point where I was like is there something wrong with me because I was feeling it had grown like my my close friend moved away and she was like over him and there there was this growing intimacy between me and Jake and I was just like I'm open to explore this, you know, like neither of us have anyone in our lives right now that is like this deep, intimate connection. And I would love to do this with someone I've already have all this history with and I love and uh, has proven to show up for me and someone that I can trust and someone that's like amazing, safe person. And he just was like blocking it. He was like, nope. Anytime I brought it up, he was just like, no, I don't think it's time yet. And maybe we can date like in the future when it's better timing for both of us. And we both have things that excuse me, we need to grow in. And I was just like, what are you talking about? Like, isn't that the point of life is to explore these things? So again, I had this feeling that like something was wrong with me. <laughs> um, and because there's so many men that want, like, that want to date me and whatever. Like, I'm not being facetious when I say, or stuck up when I say that like, pretty much any guy that I want to be into is probably going to be into me back. And then the one person that I actually wanted to explore further with was just like, no, no, no. 
and this, this, this hurt my feelings because I had done everything by the book and like what I thought was healthy choices and, and honestly closed like a lot of part of my heart towards this person because I didn't want to hurt his girlfriend and I just really did not do anything that, like I did everything that made me happy and like proud of myself. And then when, when there was like a whole year and a half, two years that had passed since they broke up and, you know, we still had this really close relationship that was getting closer and deeper. I just felt that there was this wall and I was like, why? And I also felt like I didn't want to be the person, like I said in my last podcast, I didn't want to be the person that, that made this wall go down. Like he, like, and also I couldn't, like I actually tried with, <laughs> with him because at the time I didn't know any better I didn't have higher standards for myself so I was like actually trying to you know work with it and open him up and everything energetically and it was just like nope 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 so then I um you know I grew a lot in the last year so we didn't talk for like the last year I also we have our birthdays very close by each other and um he's always throws these huge parties um and I went to his last birthday party like right before Faraday and I started dating last year and like I started to realize the vibrational difference between him and I because like I've like I don't really party anymore I don't really take that many drugs anymore and he's still in that vibration of you know taking more drugs than I would feel comfortable with I don't really dr- I don't I've never actually drank alcohol in my life uh maybe in my early 20s I drank al- like wine but then after that I was very over alcohol um and his parties that I, he organizes are like the most extravagant parties at the best villas with all the things and la 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 like on in the 3d reality it's like the best of the best but I didn't feel good in my body when I was there. And the one last year, I, I ended up leaving early and because I just like so many things were not feeling good for me. And I just energetically was like, okay, I think we're done. You know, like this is not like I'm putting myself out there. This is not being responded and I deserve better than this. And also, I don't feel good in my body around the spaces that he's creating. Um, and I was like trying. This is the thing that I think is really hard is like when you love someone so much and they've shown up for you, you've shown up for them. And then to realize that you're outgrowing each other and that like like where I was when I met him and who I was and who he was like vibrationally we, the, the gap is getting like bigger and bigger and yeah it just doesn't it doesn't feel good anymore and that's really hard um it's like so much easier to say and to like make this you know podcast saying like you need to let go of the people and then it's like a whole other thing when it's like these people feel like like literal family and I don't have any family, so when I have some, I, it means a lot to me. Like this guy and his mom and I are very close. He moved his mom out here and built her a villa. And um, his mom like has always wanted us to be together. <laughs> um, so anyway, so I paused on the relationship for about a year, uh, and Faraday and I got together, and we have our amazing love story and I really feel so met by Faraday and you know we grow together and of course he doesn't have as much trauma as I do and I think that's actually a good thing because when I'm drowning in my emotions he doesn't drown with me he just he still is his happy self and then because of my trauma and all the things that I work through I have so much depth to share with him and there's so many places that we can go spiritually and energetically that maybe he wasn't able to access before. And I can show him that in a beautiful way, in a very positive way. Uh, so I feel like we balance each other out. And and then recently, like, I kept dreaming of Jake. And, like, honestly, he, came, he comes to me a lot in, like, psychedelic trips. And, like, in the past, I'm not doing psychedelics anymore. But I've had many psychedelic trips where he just comes up. It's basically like I was holding a lot of energy for the 
connection and I was like hoping that it could go in a place that was nourishing for both of us and and then he messaged me recently and I messaged like it was like he messaged me the night that I had a dream about him and so I messaged him back and I was like I just had a dream about you and like maybe let's meet up and it's Thanksgiving coming up and he is American just like me so he's always celebrating Thanksgiving and getting a bunch of people together and having a beautiful time and I said, I think I want to come to Thanksgiving this year. Because last year I didn't go. It was like the first time in four years that I didn't go. And it was like a really big deal. His mom was very upset. And um, it's just because I was upset at him for not being who I wanted him to be. Which is dumb. I need to let go of those expectations. So I spent a whole year letting go of those expectations. And also allowing myself to be met by Faraday. Who actually meets those those standards. I don't want to say expectations, but like how I want to be met, how I want to connect to someone, how I want to have my heart met, you know, someone who's heart open. And so, um, anyways, I said to Jake, like, I know Thanksgiving's in a couple of days and I would love to meet up with you before that. And he was like, yeah, I, I can meet up tonight. And so he came over and, um, of course I let Faraday know everything and he's all supportive and great with all of it. He just wants me to like honor my body and so um jake and i were talking and I, I just like faraday went into the bedroom and was just like doing his own thing and jake and i were in the living room and i was just heart open with him i was like i've i don't understand like i've always i've always like loved you as a friend and family chosen family and i in the last year have like you know before we haven't spoken for a year, but before that, I was starting to feel feelings for you, and I was wanting to explore that, and I felt like you just didn't want to be there, you know, like, I'm, like, literally in your bed cuddling with you, and you just, like, completely shut down, and this is where the story gets really interesting, because he says stuff, he says, like, Brittany, I have always loved you, like, from the moment I met you, I have always loved you, and that love has taken many different forms. And of course, it, it has also turned into a very deep romantic love. Um, but I knew, <laughs> I knew that I wasn't the man that could meet you. Like I knew that if I allowed my heart to be open to you, I would do everything I could to be the man that you deserved. And I didn't feel like I could actually do that. And so I wanted to wait until I felt I was ready to be that man and I was hoping that there would be a place for me still that we could explore this when I became that man and I was like you've always like I was like I know you've always loved me but like you've always like you're saying that you are actually like attracted to me and like romantically and stuff and he's like yes you don't understand how hard it has been to not act on that and actually shut that down because, but because I love you so much, I know what you deserve. And I always, because I love you so much, I always wanted to honor you and honor what you deserve. And I knew that I couldn't meet that standard. And I, this is how much I love you is that I would even protect you from myself and my own desires. And I was like, okay, tell me more. Like, I'm just kind of, I was just sitting there like, what? Like, because like this is like five minutes into us talking like he's just heart open and he's like I love you so much that I couldn't bear the thought of us exploring something romantic it not working out you being disappointed by me and like somehow losing you in my life and he started crying and I and then I started crying and I was like you could never lose me like I'm I'm here I'm always here you know and I love you and I see you all the way like I see your positive things I see your flaws and like you're good you know like I love you for who you are and he's like yeah but you deserve like a king like you are a queen like you deserve a king standing by your side and I didn't feel that I was that person I knew I wasn't that person back then and I don't know if I'm even that person now and like I wasn't going to put you through that because I know what you deserve like you deserve everything and I don't know if any man can meet that but I just knew that I couldn't and I didn't want to put both of us through that and I was like okay um <laughs> I honestly was in shock at this point because I wasn't expecting this um 
And something else that he said was he was like, I always could feel that you were looking for like a leader who could like lead the community with you. And I was like, you are that leader though. Like he is, like he has led the community uh, during COVID with us and uh, has done many things um, for the community here in many different ways that I'm not going to go into. Uh, but he he's like, yeah, yeah, I am a leader, but not like I don't he's like I don't want to be the front facing like person who is like you know with a loudspeaker directing everyone he's like I'm the kind of leader where when someone needs me they come to me and they ask like for my direction and I'm able to give them that the advice that they need and the direction they need and I was like okay I honor that and honestly the next day when I was thinking about it I was like how did he see me so clearly? Because now that I look on it or think about it, like that's, that's actually what Faraday is. Like Faraday is that. So maybe that is what I wanted and needed. And I got that in Faraday because he is the leader of the community with me. He is this front facing community leader who's like super excited to, like he's the one who's helping me put myself out there more instead of me trying to get him to put himself out there more. So, Anyways, back to the story with Jake. I So I just kind of sat there in shock. And then we were just like, kind of like, yeah, we talked more. And it was just kind of like reminiscing about all these times of moments of like connection, intimacy, where we actually didn't act on anything, but we both felt a lot. And we were just like comparing stories like, yeah, this is actually how I felt then. It was just, and, it was, and realizing we felt the exact same way. And we both were just trying so hard to like protect the relationship and the connection and we were so worried about losing each other that we didn't explore anything deeper and then he was like well what happens now and I'm like well <laughs> I wasn't expecting this and uh I want to just check in with Fer I don't know what happens now I, w I, w I just wanted to share my heart with you and I'm so grateful that we're both heart open with each other and I want to check in with Faraday, you know, and see where he's at with all of this. And, um, and yeah, so we hung out more and then he went home and then, um, and then it was Thanksgiving, like two days later. And I went down with Faraday to Thanksgiving that Jake organized and like, First off, like Jake has been vegan for many years and healthy lifestyle choices, w but surrounding himself with people who do not have healthy lifestyle choices and then eventually succumbing to that. So like even for me, like I wasn't vegan with around him for a while and he would like make me food that wasn't vegan because he wanted to make me happy, but then he would eat vegan. So I assumed when we went to Thanksgiving that, yeah, there was going to be stuff there that wasn't vegan, but, you know, like with Jake and Faraday and I, we'd, we would be eating vegan. This was not the case. Um, I was in the kitchen, like, and there was just, like, meat and cheese everywhere and things that were not vegan and actually just, like, very unhealthy food being cooked. And I am not judging any of this. I think people can do whatever the fuck they want. And also for me and myself, I like to eat healthy. I like to honor my body. I like to put what feels good in my body in my body. And I, none of the things that I was helping cook with or cook was things that I actually wanted to put in my body. So I was like eating oranges and Faraday like brought me some snacks. And I just kind of was like, I don't. And then like all the people there, like there wasn't any of my close people there and I just felt like what am I doing here like Thanksgiving is a day where any holidays is just an excuse to get together and like bond over making food and I was like making food that I didn't want to eat with people like besides Jake and his mom I, there was no one there that I actually wanted to bond with and I was just feeling alone I was like what am I doing here <laughs> And like, again, these people are not bad people. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just like, I didn't feel at home with them. And that is not a, yeah, there's no judgment on these people. It's just that I didn't feel nourished by the situation and what we were talking about. And 
And then like, I was just kind of imagining like my soul tribe, all of us cooking like really yummy food, everyone vibing and like having the best time and talking about like the new earth stuff that we're building and like, and just understanding the structure of reality and like understanding where we are in the timeline and just like laughing about it all and having like the most goofy fun time as a tribe and like feeling so at home together. Like this is what I was like, this is what I'm craving and this is actually what we have this winter like we have so much planned for Christmas and New Year's and like all the holiday stuff and so many amazing events and parties and soul tribe gatherings going to happen um and so I'm there like you know stirring like mac and cheese with like cream cheese and butter and full full milk and I was just like what am I doing like why am I here and and then like more people started to show up and it was just like a lot of these people and everyone was very surprised that I was there and I was also like I'm also surprised why am I here because I didn't feel like I fit in and like the people that I knew I didn't want to hang out with like I'd had stories with them where I didn't have a positive experience and yeah it was just like a lot of like drug dealers and like people who are just very party oriented and like the kind of partying where they take a lot of hard drugs that I don't resonate with like very different lifestyle than mine trying to say all of this in the most positive way and Faraday was just like yeah I'm gonna go home like I'm not feeling super great and also I don't want to eat any of this food and I don't really vibe with any of these people and I was like I don't think I want to be here either like it took me at first I was upset that he was leaving because I was like don't you want to be here with like and then I was like wait maybe he's actually helping me to see all of this because like when I was after he left he was about to leave and then he was gathering the stuff I like looked around and I was like actually I don't want to talk to any of these people and like the only people that I want to hang out with is Jake and his mom but like we are who we surround ourselves with right And if there's 60 people there that I don't want to hang out with and two people that I do, I think the ratio is a little off, you know? And so I just told them that Faraday wasn't feeling good and I also, I wanted to go home and I said goodbye. And then, so this happened two days ago and then all of yesterday, I felt really sad. I was like really wanting to see who this person was because I had held so much energetic space for Jake to be you know someone who is like a special person in my life and whether that's as a big brother just chosen family or something romantic I don't really care like I just viewed this connection as something that was that could be nourishing for me and it could be you know an ally to build a new earth with and someone that I could yeah like enjoy life with and vibe with and I was just not vibing there like I was like I'm here I'm showing up and I just did not vibe there and yeah it's one thing for us to be able to vibe on our own and and like alone but this is like the vibrational gap is just too big for me now and I and I don't want to I choose to hang out with people where they just get it you know and like I'm the close people I'm talking about, the people who I'm going to share my like intimate life with. Um, I, I choose to have these people be people who are on a similar vibration and who have the same soul mission here on the earth and who ha- are choosing to make like healthy lifestyle choices and, and choosing to surround themselves with people who are nourishing, you know? So I felt like yesterday I was grieving the idea of who I thought Jake could be in my life. It was almost like a breakup with someone energetically, I guess. I mean, yeah, I guess that's what breakups are, but like nothing had happened romantically, but it was just like, uh, okay, now I realize I need to cut this cord and in, in how much I'm holding space for this person to be in my life. And I can like love them, but they're not, they're not showing up in a, and they're not showing up in a way that is like nourishing for me. Like with Jake, he's always showed up in my life. Like when I was in crisis and like in need of help, 
And thankfully that hasn't been many times, but he has shown up and he's one of the few people that I feel comfortable asking for help. And I'm very grateful for all the times that he's shown up in my life. And also I've moved into a vibration where there isn't crisis in my life anymore. You know, like I'm not, I'm in, I, I'm in the new earth vibration where things are flowing and they're amazing. And like every day feels like a dream. And with him, there's always something going on and he's very good at navigating crisis. But like if there is always a crisis going on or there's something that needs to be fixed, like that's an energy that you are putting yourself in, you know, like whatever is being demonstrated or projected out in the 3D is a reflection of what's going on in, inside of us energetically. So again, no judgment there, but I, I want to be around, I choose to be around people who are, have the space and the energy and just get it and are here to like raise up the collective through our high vibration. And so anyways, I sent him a message this morning. Um, I'm actually going to read the message because basically I, I had left it like open-ended, like, okay, you know, after, th before, like before Thanksgiving, we had talked and it was like, okay, after Thanksgiving, let's make some time where we're like one-on-one -on -one and we can explore and like see where this goes and blah, blah, blah. And I was this morning and I was like, no, 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 I think I need to cut that. Like, that's not a thing. So I sent him a message. He wrote me and was like, hey, how are you doing and stuff? And I, I wrote him and I said, hey, I've been feeling into this all. I think we should just keep it friends and family vibes and let go of the romantic. <clears throat> Something shifted in me when I saw the people that you're friends with and everyone drinking and smoking. I have no judgment of any of it. And also, these are not my people. Um... We are who we choose to surround ourselves with. And I keep realizing that maybe I'm still projecting onto you who I know you could be, which isn't fair to anyone. So yesterday I took a step back energetically so I could really see where you're at. And now I realize like, yeah, let's just be friends and family to each other. The men that I choose to share my body with are new earth men, men that are building the new earth through their vibrations understanding the structure of reality, releasing karma, processing their trauma, taking care of their bodies through healthy lifestyle choices, surrounding themselves with like-minded people who are here to share light and raise the vibration of the collective. All this might sound funny to you, but this is the reality that I love to live in, and I have a whole community of amazing souls who are on the same page. And I don't mean random... <laughs> Uh, this was an inside thing between him and I. I said, I don't mean random out, outside community people because he, he knows that I'm always doing community outreach stuff and he's always told me like, why don't you build your actual soul tribe? And so I told him like, yeah, I've actually done that now. I was like, these, these are my real soul tribe and it took me stepping into my full power and shining as my authentic self for them to find me. And it also took saying no thank you to many who wanted to be in my energy but in which it felt draining. So I got those people out of my life. And the last thing I said was, my higher self knows you could be one of these men. And also I need to let the physical timeline play out and meet you where you really are right now. And then he just wrote back, thanks for letting me know. I, underst or I understand. Thanks for sharing or something. And I was just like, okay, so that's where we're at. Um, and it feels like this... I just want to take a deep breath. I invite you to take a deep breath with me if you want. So breathe in through your stomach and all the way out the top of your head. So breathe in. And then sigh. Let's do one more. Breathe in and expand your stomach. I feel clear again and like back to myself and also yeah like still kind of sad because something that a lot of people don't talk about is that when you really wake up to the reality of how the world is and like the structure of reality what's happening in the world and understanding how the physical timeline is playing out understanding that we're always shifting and that some people are not going to shift with you into your new reality bubble. And that I'm not saying something, it doesn't need to be as dramatic as like them like dying or, you know, something like super crazy happening. I just mean like 
they don't vibe anymore with you and they don't it doesn't feel good around them anymore and so you can choose to keep hanging out with them and have it not feel good or you can choose to shift away from them and hang out with them less and create space for the people that actually feel good in your body to hang out with and who align with what your values are and your mission and your new vibration and that's hard (laughs) I'm here to share this because it's real and it's hard and this is a moment where it still kind of hurts you know and it doesn't feel the best in my body um and also I'm allowing those feelings to go through and I'm gonna go to the waterfall after this and scream and you know because at the end of the, the reason why I was like journaling this morning I was like why is this bothering me and it's like the reason is because I still am this little girl on the inside that wants everyone to be happy and wants the people that I love to take care of themselves and and like have their love feel good and have it feel good to hang out around them because I grew up in an environment where it didn't feel good to be with my family so the people that loved me didn't feel good in my body to spend time with them in this situation feels like another one of those and it's one of the last ones because everyone else in my life is very much feeling good in my body to hang out with I'm like so excited for so many people that are coming even just next week uh like my um, my adoptive, I call him my, my godfather. He's like my spiritual dad. He's coming next week. I actually made a podcast with him at the very beginning of me making podcasts. He's amazing. And like, these people are super positive. They're on the new earth vibration. They're here like, okay, let's build an eco village. Let's like figure this out. Let's, you know, raise our vibration. Let's make beautiful things in the world and take care of all the people around us that we care about. And raise the collective vibration through us vibing and being ourselves <sighs> so I also want to give a shout out to Faraday that he is so supportive as a stable partner um, I mean I honor everything that we agree and um, my main priority is protecting Faraday's heart and making sure that he, uh, we have a safe space to keep our hearts open in our connection. And then while we're doing that, also be able to be open to other connections. But like our priority is each other, right? And Faraday has been such a stable person in all of this. And um, and it makes me really happy. And it makes me so happy that we have each other. And it makes me appreciate him and us. And And also something that I think is really interesting is... In the past, I've had partners where we were want, like wanting to explore being open, and they I could tell that they weren't actually comfortable with me exploring being open, and it made the outside person feel extra attractive because it wasn't even about the extra connection, the outside connection than my partner. It was the feeling of being free to connect to whoever I wanted to. And when your partner is just le- allowing that and allowing that energy to free flow, f- 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 freely flow. Wow, can you get that out? Um, it makes you be able to see the reality of like the outside connection. And it takes all this kind of a glamour off of it of like, oh, this is like something naughty. And like, you know, this is connected to my freedom and my empowerment. It's like when you're already in your power just by being yourself and already with your partner, you don't need to act this out externally with an external connection. And I think this is the unhealthy side of openness where people are attaching their freedom to like having sex with someone. When it's like your freedom is you just being able to have your free will and that's you always doesn't matter if you're sleeping with someone or not um and that's you just being in your power and then it makes it's like do i is this actually a healthy thing to connect with this extra person does do i actually is this actually following my joy or or is this just like something i want to explore energetically without physically doing anything and i am so grateful that i was able to explore all of this energetically and emotionally uh and not do anything physically 
And that's something that I'm really proud of. And for me, that's actually the most important thing. Like the physical connection is secondary for me to the soul connection, the emotional connection, the spiritual connection. So, yeah, these are all my learnings. This is me, raw and real, and not my perky self. Um, but you get all of me. So here's my vulnerable shower. I hope this was impactful. And, yeah, keep being your amazing self. Keep being inspired by life. And, yeah, sending you guys all lots of love. Bye.